Welcome to Dartmoor and Emsworthy Tour, and I'm going to photograph this location every month for an entire year. When we visit a location to create a landscape photograph, it could be the very first time we've been to that spot, or we could have been there many times before. Quite often though, these locations are either seasonal favourites or favourites we have for certain types of weather. But how many of us have a location that we visit at any time of year in any weather condition? I know I don't. So I definitely have my seasonal favourites and there are definitely locations I like to shoot in certain types of weather conditions, but I've never picked a location and been able to shoot it all year round. But that's why I've come here to Dartmoor National Park and um, Emsworthy Tour here. I'm going to spend the next year photographing it. I'm going to come out here in all the seasons, in any weather conditions, it doesn't matter, but I will take a picture here every month for a year. Right, let me tell you about this location. So Emsworthy Tor, um, it's not far from Haytor, which is just over there. And I've got Ripon Tor just over there. Roads only a few hundred meters that way, so it's relatively easy to access. And um, it's also not far from home, so it doesn't take me long to get here, so I should be able to come back here on a regular basis. The other thing, I've shot this location um, a couple of times before. It's also the inspiration for my logo as well. So um, I've got a bit of a connection to this place already, but I'm hoping it's gonna leave me with plenty of compositional options. For example, I can shoot the tour and the tree right here looking north. Another option is to shoot it here. I've still got the tour and the tree, but this time I'm looking south towards Haytor. I've also got the option of just shooting the tour or even just the tree. I could also shoot it from this elevated viewpoint or I could shoot it from all the way over here. The point is I've got options. I've got plenty of options for composition. So even though I photographed this location a couple of times, I've only ever really done it from one or two angles. So this little project, this little idea should be a really good opportunity for me to get to know this location a little bit better. And being Dartmoor, of course, the weather is bound to be very varied throughout all the seasons. Okay, I think we're ready to make a start. Now, I'm actually filming this intro in May, so we're gonna to have to do a bit of time travel and go back to January. Hello and welcome to January. Now, because it's Dartmoor, it's January, it's winter, the conditions are pretty awful. It's um, kind of hole in a gale, I'm kind of sheltered in behind the tour at the moment, so. It's very windy, there are passing heavy, wintry showers. It's just generally miserable. No one in their right mind would actually be up here to take photographs on a day like this. So I was going to tell you about my composition at the place where I was going to take the photograph, but it's so windy out there. Um, I don't think you're going to hear me, even though I've got a, a photo cat on the uh, old microphone there. I think it's just a little bit windy, so I'm going to stay here in the shelter and tell you about my composition. We didn't even have a look at the sky there. There are some breaks in the cloud. Now the forecast did say there would be sort of 50 to 60% cloud coverage, but I'm gonna take the kind of most obvious shot. So when you come down from the road, you've got the tour on your, sorry, the tour on your right and the tree on your left. And I'm gonna use some of the rocks and some of the undulations in the uh, foreground to make a nice sort of composition. It is like you say, the most obvious one. So I think that's what I've got to do. Uh, I'm going to set the camera up and I'm just going to wait. I've not got long before sunset so I'm pretty well going to know quite early on whether I'm going to get a good shot or not. Uh, I'm going to get a shot, just don't know if it's going to be a spectacular shot. So I'm going to get the camera set up and take the shot. Well, that was definitely one of the most challenging shoots I've been on for a while. As soon as I step out into the tour with the camera, the wind would really pick up. I get battered by some sort of rain or hail shower. It made things really difficult. So I was trying to compose an image, but of course, taking the lens cap off, it get covered in water. I mean, the camera's fine. It's just the front of the lens getting that covered in water, but it's been really challenging. And like I said, no one in the right mind would have come out taking photographs on a day like this, but at least that's me done. I've got January in the bag.
Yes, welcome to February and back at Emsworthy, where the sort of ground conditions haven't really changed much since January. Things are still quite wintry, quite barren, um, but the weather conditions are slightly different. It's still fairly windy, which is quite annoying, um, but the skies are very clear. Uh, it's very blue, I wasn't sure what I was going to shoot this morning, but there's a quite a bit of uh, ground fog kicking about, so I'm hoping to maybe use that in my picture this morning. But I am going to do less talking this morning. Well, I realised when I got back yes, uh, from January, I should say, I edited all the video, I've done quite a lot of talking, and if I do that for every single month, it's going to be a very long video, so I'm just going to focus on the photography. Very quickly though, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shoot just the tree, this morning I think uh, and use some of the fog hopefully on the surrounding hills maybe a little bit of colour in the sky we'll see how it goes and it's going to be just a sort of nice simple composition I'm going to put the tree slightly to the right of the frame and the branches go to the left um, and I'm probably probably going to use a vertical composition but uh, I'll take a few shots and we'll see how we go but anyway less chat more photography Well, that's when we got February in the bag. I tried a few different compositions, a few different shots, uh, but the sun's up now, so uh, my time here is pretty well done. So I will see, obviously see you in March. Now, depending on the timing, that will either be the probably the last shot of winter, or it could be the first shot of spring. But either way, I'll see you in March. Yes, hello, welcome to March. No, it's not quite spring yet. Well, it depends which way you're looking at it. I didn't know this, but let me just double check this. So 1st of March, which we're now past, is the first day of meteorological spring. But the 20th of March is the first day of astronomical spring. And that's normally the time I classify spring, but we're not there yet. So we're, I guess, technically still in winter. Now, I've made a bit of a boo-boo, I didn't, I sent my camera away for cleaning. I forgot to put the, the, the tripod plate back on it, so I can't actually attach it to my tripod. So I'm having to use the video head that I would normally use for this on that, and that's kind of limit, limited me, so I can't do any vertical composition, which is what I wanted to do here. So this, this could be a bit of a disaster, but the way I'm gonna look at it is at least, um, I'm, I guess I'm gonna call it a bit of a recce shot for, I guess, March. Um, I quite like this composition. If I can get it vertical next time when there's some really good light, I've got the roots of the tree coming out from the ground and the rocks um, uh, surrounding it. It could be, could be quite a nice composition. Not tonight, there's just no light. This is just rubbish. So this is three months in the trot. I'm hoping that April is gonna be a much better month. But anyway, enough chit chat. There's no point in chatting too much about what we can't do and what we can do. Um, let's take the shot and um, see what it looks like. Right, I've sneaked in the shot, but as a, as with, I guess, January, February, they're not great shots, lacking some light. It's just, um, well, it's just Dartmoor and winter. It's just <laughs> sometimes never a great season to come here. But I'm continuing to stay optimistic for this particular project. I'm sure I've got another nine months to go and I've got plenty of opportunities to get some really good light. Anyway, I think I've, I've had enough here um, and we'll come back in spring and we'll do uh, the April shot, which I'm sure is going to be better. I'll see you then. Okay, yes, it's April and spring has sprung. It's great to finally be out of winter and into some more favorable conditions, or certainly I hope they're gonna be more favorable. Certainly the tree is looking a definitely uh, a little bit better now. The leaves are starting to come through and there's a bit of green color now on it. I'm probably, for tonight, not gonna do a close-up shot of the tree, even though I'd like to use some of that green. It's quite windy here and the branches are blowing about quite a bit. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a step back from the tour. So I'm probably gonna to either shoot from roughly about here and the advantage of that is I've got the setting sun over there which is hopefully going to be some nice light 
on the tour on the tree behind me. The only thing is, the sky over there is very clear. So the other option I've got is to nip over the other side and shoot towards the setting sun where there's a nice dramatic cloud. In fact, there might be too much cloud and that sun might just dip below it and it might not get any light at all. So really, I'm just gonna have to think on my feet and uh, see what options present itself over the next hour. So um, I'll get myself set up and I'll come back to you when I'm ready to take the shot. Okay, so this evening has been a bit of a mixed bag. Obviously, I got a shot which I'm reasonably happy with. It's certainly better than probably some of the winter shots that I had. It was quite challenging though. So I did come around the other side and it's been quite difficult to compose around here as well because it's a little bit further out and I was trying to add some separation in between the tour and the tree. Um, but unfortunately, as I swung around at the position I was at, I could neither uh, get rid of the buildings that were behind and they were sitting right on the tree, which didn't make for, made for a bit of a a messy composition uh, and also the difficulty in positioning the tour on the tree directly on the horizon line so try and get up or down left or right it's quite tricky but um, I did uh, eventually hopefully find uh, a good balance between uh, removing the, the buildings uh, and not placing those objects on the horizon you know um, it's a definite improvement over some of those winter months uh, and I'm looking forward to next month where there's going to be hopefully even more green on the tree uh, and hopefully we'll get some even better light. I'll see you in May. Hello and welcome to May. Right. I'm feeling a bit down about this particular project at the moment. Well, maybe let me let me quantify that really. I'm just not having much luck when it comes to the weather conditions. So even though things are really nice now, it's here uh, that, that it's spring. I've come out again uh, this evening and the conditions aren't looking great. I think I'm going to struggle again tonight. There's a lot of big blanket bank of cloud over there with the sun setting. So I do think I'm going to get in the evening light. Now I do have two hours before sunset, so things can change. Lots of nice gaps over there, but that's not going to do me any good when the light's coming from over there. And um, also I've been looking back at the, the pictures that I've been taking and, you know, I'm just not that happy with them. You know, partly that's something to do with the conditions, um, but also my compositions maybe haven't been um, brilliant. But what I will say, when I take the positives away from it, one of the things I wanted to do was to get to know this location a bit better. And that's what I am doing. So even while I've not been happy necessarily with the, the compositions or the light or the, the photographs themselves, that I'm getting a lot of good ideas, a lot of, I'll be able to fine tune some of these compositions and I'm sure that before the year's out, I'm gonna get a good picture. So anyway, I feel better now for saying that. I'm gonna stay positive actually and I'm gonna try my best tonight to see what we can capture. I can't believe it. It's amazing how things can change so quickly. When I got here, it was all very depressing, gray and overcast and I really thought, tonight was going to be a write-off. But as to predicted by the forecast, yes, the forecast was right for, for once. The sun, uh, the clouds cleared and the sun started to set and it bathed the whole scene in some really nice warm light. So my composition, I went out, uh, had a quick look about and I found these rocks that could create some nice patterns and shapes. And then amongst there, there was some of that fresh green uh, plants from spring and they were just catching the light and that was really nice. And it's just a little bit of light catching on the tour and on the uh, tree itself. And then the sky was quite interesting as well. The, all the, the cloud had broken up. All in all, it's a pretty good scene. So I, I can't believe it. I was pretty down, <laughs> as you might have guessed, at the start um, of this month uh, when I came here. But now things have really turned around and um, I'm pretty happy. So I'm gonna share with you uh, one of the shots. I do hope you enjoyed that picture. I'm pretty sure it's an improvement um, over the previous months. Definitely having some light has made a real difference there. And, you know, being able to take this shot tonight has really reinvigorated my enthusiasm for this project. So I think it's just what I needed and it came just at the right time. So I'm really looking forward to seeing you in June.
Hello and welcome to June and it's now summer. Well, you would think it's summer, but look at the weather. It's absolutely horrible. It's gray, it's overcast, there's loads of clouds about. It's just starting to rain. <laughs> After the, the high of last month and getting a nice image, I just, <laughs> I'm back to square one again. I mean, Dartmoor, God, it's such a hard place to shoot sometimes. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna try and get something. I'm here now. Um, but I'm going to have a look about it. I'll come back to you once I've shot the picture because there's no point in me telling you what I'm going to do because I'm going to try and be a bit more dynamic. And besides, um, I've done too much talking in these videos, did a bit of editing, and uh, it's looking like quite a long video already, so I need to cut back on the chat. Uh, so I'll come back to you when I've got a picture. <laughs> for July hopefully I've spotted little clumps of heather up here in so that can make for some really nice foreground interest so I'm, I'm optimistic that's, that's got to be the key word of this video isn't it optimistic because that's all I keep saying I'm optimistic for the next month but you know that is the way it is um yeah so hopefully maybe a little bit of heather ever comes sort of late July um, maybe I'll have to wait till August but um yeah there's still there's still work here to be done but my god this is a this is a hard project but I'll see you in July Hello and welcome to July. So I'm going to try and keep things really brief tonight. Uh, I don't even know quite what I'm going to shoot or how I'm going to shoot it yet. All I know is I should have brought my sunglasses because the sun's right in my eyes and it's all a bit blurry at the moment. But anyway, um, conditions. It's very windy, so that's going to make photography a little bit challenging. The tree's moving about quite a bit. Uh, there is some heather that I thought might come through from last month. That's Some of that's coming through, but uh, with all it moving so much, it's probably going to make it impossible to shoot. Sky's looking pretty clear that direction. Heavy cloud over that way, so I might lose the light early on. But it's quite a lot of high-level cloud as well, so I really don't know which way it's going to go. So I'm really going to think on my feet, and uh, I'm probably the next thing you're going to see is actually the picture that I take, and then I'll tell you um, how I came about it. I'll speak to you in a bit. Okay, that's my shot for July in the bag. Bit of a tricky one tonight. I had to walk about quite a bit to find a composition. Uh, I was pretty limited in the end, so I, I went to the kind of uh, the north side of the, the tour and the tree. But I did get some nice light on the tour and the tree, which was quite good. But because of the high wind speeds, a lot of the kind of uh, bracken and the greenery in the foreground, see, it's still quite blowing out. It was blowing about quite a bit. Uh, but anyway, I've got, got a shot, I'm pretty happy. Looking forward to August, it'll be interesting to see how the environment is changing. I only noticed that the tree isn't as green anymore. A lot of bracken about, it's all luscious and green, so I don't know, depending on when I come in August, it might be starting to turn, we'll just have to see. But um, yeah, looking forward to it, so I'll see you in August. Good morning and welcome to August. Yes, I've come here for a dawn shoot for a change. I haven't done a dawn shoot at this location for this project since uh, February, I think it was. So um, now I have made really no plans at all for this particular shoot. Now it's just unusual, normally I'm checking the weather and doing all sorts of stuff and trying to plan it. But I have left the August shoot to the very last minute. It's the 31st of August today. So I've got no choice but to come up here and get a shot, but it is very windy. Uh, it's quite heavy cloud at the moment, but it is passing through quickly and there are some nice gaps. Now, I've got a, a rough idea of a shot that I might want to take this morning. This has been inspired from one of my earlier shots uh, taken in a previous month. Um, but again, it's going to be, the weather's quite dynamic, so I'm going to have to be quite dynamic. So uh, let's see what we get. Right, it's been another challenging morning, I have to say. We didn't get the light 
uh, that I was really hoping for. Well, I actually, I don't know what I was hoping for because I didn't check the weather forecast. What did I get this morning? Well, another grey and overcast shot, unfortunately. There was some nice light over at Haytor uh, for a little while, um, but the sun just didn't break long enough to come and uh, give me some uh, nice light, even uh, at Emsworthy here. So I had a little look about, tried to pick out some new compositions. So I did find one slightly more off to the left if you're facing on towards the tree and the tall. And it, I think it worked quite well. Um, I quite like the, the foreground rocks and the way it leads out to the tree and the tor. I couldn't quite get a separation of all the branches from the tree uh, and the tor, which is a bit of a shame, but I did manage to lower the tripod a little bit and not include the buildings, uh, the farm buildings that are far off uh, in the background. So, um, yeah, it's a pleasing enough image, not what I wanted, but um, you know, I'd, <laughs> when I started this project, I didn't expect to get 12 uh, amazing images, but what I am doing is I'm learning lots more about this location and picking out uh, new composition, so it's all good. Anyway, it's September tomorrow, and what's just now, I'll be back here tomorrow, but I will be back in September, so I'll see you then. <music>Good evening and welcome to September. Now, if you look about, you can see it's actually getting quite dark. And the reason being is that the sun has already set. So what on earth am I doing here? Am I gonna do some wild camping adventure and stay over here overnight and wait for sunrise in the morning? Nope, I'm actually waiting for the moon to rise, which should be happening any minute now behind me. Now, it's gonna be almost a full moon, but I've got the advantage that there's no clouds in the sky. So. I had a bit of a random idea. I thought I'll try something different. I'm gonna try and get a moonlit shot. So as the moon rises up above the horizon, because there's no clouds in the sky and it's almost a full moon, I should get the full effect of that reflected light from the moon. And hopefully, if this thing works, I should get some nice moonlight on the ground and on the tour and on the, uh, on the tree. I've, like I say, I've got no idea whether this is gonna work, but I thought, why not? Let's give it a try, see what happens. Uh, the worst case is, you know, I've done something new, I've tried it and it hasn't worked, but you know, part of this project is to try new things, new exciting things, new different compositions, and like I say, use different light, for example. So why don't we see what happens when the moon rises? As you can see, it is now pretty dark. The moon is up and it's casting a little bit of light on the ground, probably not as much as I hoped. I think maybe my inexperience of trying to do this type of photography, well, it has definitely shown through. I really kind of struggled picking out compositions, focusing, all sorts of technique problems. But you know what, the main thing is that I gave it a go. What I would have liked, I think what would have been better was um, actually not waiting for the moon to come up, but for the moon to probably be a lot higher in the sky and might have got a bit more light. But you know what? All those technical issues aside, I had a good time. I tried something new. I'm sure one of the images will be okay because obviously you've seen it. I think uh, I, I did quite like the one I did at the very end where I just had the tree and I had the Big Dipper just above it. Um, you know, none of these are gonna be award-winning shots, but sometimes you just gotta go out, experiment and have a bit of fun with your photography. And that's exactly what I've done tonight. So anyway, I shall see you in October. Okay, let's talk about October's photograph. Now, I think this will probably be the last time I'm here for sunset. Um, we're getting on to the time where the clock's change now, which means it's gonna be more and more difficult for me to get out here in time to catch the last light. So I think for the last two months, it will be back to sunrise shoots. Now, this is actually a photograph I've wanted to create for a few months now. I gave it its first go, I think, back in March, uh, but that was when I didn't have the right tripod and the right tripod plate, and I couldn't mount my camera correctly to give me the vertical orientation to capture all this tree. I am a little bit extra lucky, though, this month because I've got a 14mm lens uh, as opposed to my normal 16mm lens. And I know that doesn't sound a lot, uh, but when you try and capture this whole tree as close as I am to it, at the moment, then actually that extra two millimeters makes quite a bit of difference. So I'm about ready to take the shot. 
I'm just going to wait to see how the clouds pass by through that, that clear bit there. And it's a little bit windy, so the tree is moving a little bit, so there might be a little bit of blurring of the, the branches. But I'm, I'm reasonably happy with what I've got set up here. Okay, my work here is done. As you can see behind me there, it's getting quite dark. There's a lot of gray cloud rolling in. It's coming around from the side as well. Um, but I've still got November and December to go. And like I say, they're gonna be probably sunrise shots. Uh, so we'll see what that brings. And you know, maybe in December, might get a bit of snow. You never know, it would be nice to get at least one snowy image in the collection. But you know, I think I'm maybe hoping for a bit much of them, absolutely honest. But anyway, I shall see you in November. Good morning and welcome to November. Yeah, that's right, I've only got two more shots to take, including this one, and then I'm done with this project. Now, I was thinking of a way to sort of wrap up this project. I've come up with a pretty cool idea, I think. Um, so do stay tuned to the end of the video, so I'll shoot the December image, and then uh, I'll do this thing that I've got planned, so please do stay tuned. So I've had a little look about the area, and I've also been looking at my previous shots on Lightroom on my mobile, and I'm pretty sure I've not taken this shot before. So again, similar to other ones with the, the tree and the tour, obviously, but I'm going to make use of what autumnal colour there is left in the ground here. Some of the bracken here is kind of turned a base of nice purpley colour, so I'm going to use that in my foreground. Use this rock, which would look brilliant if it had some of the, the morning light from the rising sun, but there you go. And they kind of both make a leading line that goes out to the tree in the tall there. As for the cloud right at the back there, that's still looking quite heavy. It's not even really moving that much. I mean, like I say, there's hardly a breath of wind up here. Um, so the sky's not going to be particularly interesting. So I think it might be a little bit of a, a flat shot for me. Um, but, you know, I think it's worth taking. And, um, you know, I'm here now, so let's take the shot. I think I'm done here. Uh, conditions aren't going to get any better. It's, it's very settled here. It's very cloudy and overcast. I could be waiting hours before things, uh, if things get any better. So yeah, it's been another challenging, challenging trip up to Emsworthy. Um, but of course, I do have one more month left. Fingers crossed for me, and I'll see you in December. and welcome to December. Yes, it's the final month of this project. Am I sad? Well, at the moment, not particularly. I think I've had my fill of Emsworthy tour. It has been a challenging project, but I might feel differently. Once I put all the video together, uh, I might feel a little bit sad. And you know, this is never going to be the last time I'm coming here. There's no point in saying that. I haven't exhausted all compositions. That would be impossible. But that reminds me, as I mentioned last month, I'm going to do something special. So after you've seen uh, this month, please do stay tuned and uh, see what I've got planned for rounding off this project. I'm, I'm quite excited about it actually. It's gonna be a nice way to, to finish everything off. Okay, I've got my composition picked out and it's kind of similar to one that I did uh, in a previous month. Now I'll come down to the kind of right-hand side of the tour with some uh, nice foreground rocks. Um, but my position is slightly different from that other month. I'll come down a little bit further and what that's allowed me to do is to make this kind of curved shape of the rocks and they kind of lead through the foreground up to the tree giving you the rest of the view. It also allows me to uh, bring in some of the undulations on the ground and what I'm hoping is that when the sun rises in a few minutes that light is going to catch those undulations and give it a nice bit of contrast. But even if it doesn't I, I think this is still quite a strong composition probably the best picture I'm going to get today. As you can tell the camera's moving about quite a bit. I've got water and ice. It's very windy up here. My hands are absolutely freezing. So I'm going to put the camera down and hopefully my my hands won't freeze at, uh, just at the critical moment when I get that light. But I'm sure it'll be fine. And I'll speak to you again in a minute. I 
can't believe it. I've actually finished. Got my 12th shot in the bag. I'm so happy that I've got everything done. And as it's turned out, it's actually been quite a good image. I am absolutely delighted to finish on a bit of a high note. Um, considering the amount of grey, overcast, miserable days I've had up here, it's quite nice to, to finish on a bit of a bit of a high. But please do stick around uh, for the next bit of the video. To be honest, if you're still watching this and it's December, you stuck it out this long, you might as well stick it out for another couple of minutes. And in that, I'll do that special thing that I was talking about, and I'll talk about some of the images and things I've learned, and kind of wrap the, wrap the whole thing up. Far too cold to do that here. Now, I'm going to go home and have a cup of coffee and a bacon roll, because I've been out here a couple of hours, and it's women for reason. See you in a bit. Hello, and welcome back to M's Where They Tour, and my solo one visitor exhibition. Yes, that's right. That grand idea that I've been talking about over the last couple of months uh, to finish off this project was to come here and display my work in some sort of solo mini exhibition. Now, what I didn't really consider was, as with many of my grand ideas, uh, was actually the practicality of doing it. Making the prints is one thing, but actually coming up here and finding uh, somewhere to display them, my idea was to originally hang them off the tree. But what I failed to remember was it's going to be January in winter on Dartmoor. I mean, when am I ever going to get a reasonably calm day enough to hang prints off a tree? So I'll kind of settle for putting them on the ground there. But you know what? I still really appreciate the idea. I really like the idea because it's really nice to see those images that I took over a year on the ground here uh, with the actual location itself in the background. I think it makes for a, a quite a nice and fitting end to this project. So I'm going to do two things in this little final section of the video. I'm going to go through and, and have a quick chat about the images now that I've uh, had time to sort of review them all. And I'm going to tell you what I learned uh, from doing this project. So just before we start on this one, I, I will say that I'm going to display all 12 images at the end. And I would like to hear in the comments below which one is your favourite. This is January, definitely not my favourite, that's for sure. A uh, very wet and wild day that was. Uh, and I've got quite a grey and flat image. I guess the composition's OK, but not much really to write home about in this one. OK, this is February, a definite improvement over January, I have to say. At least I've got some nice morning light, I think it is, on this image. What I don't like is I've not left myself enough room around the edges of the frame here. This could have been, at, remembering back, probably at time just to do with some distractions here towards the right, but the tree is just a little bit too tight to the edge of the frame and I would like a little bit more space. Moving on to March, and I've got the picture just of the tree this time. Now, this is probably a composition or certainly an angle that I hadn't considered before, but this is one of the things I wanted to do as part of this project, was to actually find some new composition. So I've got just a tree here. Now, I, I did mean to take this in a vertical orientation, but I think at the time I had a bit of a problem with the tripod, I'd taken the wrong head or the wrong plate. But, you know, overall, pretty happy with this one. The sun's actually just coming up now. It's actually quite a beautiful morning here on Dartmoor. Why it wasn't like this more often when I was shooting the project, I don't know. But anyway, this is April. Now, I'm not that keen on this image at all. Uh, I've got some kind of nice light in the sky, but I just don't like this foreground area at all. I don't know what I was thinking at the time, but I just don't think it works. I've got this rock here, but I don't think the, the placement of it is particularly good. There's a lot of empty space here. Uh, yeah, I'm I just not, not keen on this one. I think if I was going to shoot it from uh, over this area a bit, I'd have to try a bit harder with the uh, composition. Landscape photography can be hard, and landscape photography in Dartmoor can be even harder. And after four months of struggling to get uh, a picture, finally I got a break in May and I got this one here. I got some really nice light on the foreground. I like the, the shape of the rocks and the way it leads out up into the tor and to the trees. So, this is probably one of my favourites. I'm not sure which one is my favourite yet, uh, but this really gave me a, a great boost in May when I got this image. Right, moving on to June and the panoramic image, the only one I took of the entire project. Now, I quite like, again, this is one of the benefits of doing this project, was thinking a little bit differently and trying out different compositions. Um, now, while I'm not 100% happy with the image, I think there's maybe a little bit too much space over here, and then the image drops off here as well. I really like the idea of the format. And even though it's not a particularly bright day, I think the summer spring colours here with the grass being all green works quite well with the slightly darker sky. So I quite like the tone to this image. 
but I think the panoramic format, I think this is one I want to revisit here, uh, and, but just maybe try it from a slightly different position. On to July and the peak of summer. Now I've taken this image around the other side here. I've got some really nice evening light from the setting sun. The grass and the, the, the ground is all looking lush and green. I've got these leading lines from these rocks out here. And of course I've got that nice evening light and hay tor in the distance. I really like this image. Maybe a little bit too much movement uh, in the grasses there for me, but it was a very, very windy day. But yeah, a nice image. The sun is really getting in my eyes now. It's quite good light here. Uh, unlike this picture, which had no light. It was a bit of a, a gray flat day in August, which is, you know, you would expect slightly better for, for summer, but that's Dartmoor for you. But while this picture lacks light, what I do like about it is the composition. It's actually one of my favorite compositions. I like the foreground rocks here as they lead you out towards the tor and the tree. And there's just enough separation between these two uh, to make the image work. But I'm, I've made a note of this particular spot and I will like to revisit this one time when I get a little bit better light. Moving on to September and this moonlit shot. And this is probably one of the more uh, creative shots that I took during this entire project. And, and again, one of the good things about doing this project was trying to do different things, not just different composition, but using different techniques. Now at the time, as I said, I think I would have been better shooting it a bit later on in the evening when the moon had uh, got a bit higher in the sky and, and doing a little bit of a shorter shutter speed because a tiny little bit of blur in the stars. But as a kind of concept, as a kind of idea, you know, I quite enjoy it. I'm glad I took it, actually. October and another shot of just a tree on its own. And this is a shot that I had originally envisaged, I think, way back in March. Now, what I also had the advantage of here is that I've moved to the Nikon Z system and now I had access to a 14 millimeter lens. So having those extra two millimeters allowed me to really capture the tree on its entirety without encompassing too much of the distracting uh, surrounding area. Now, again, not brilliant light, but it wasn't terrible either. But I really like uh, the, the texture in the ground and the texture of the tree and its, and its bare branches. What I would like to do is probably try and repeat this shot when it's um, all green, so probably during the, uh, the summer, maybe even with a bit of need and light. But again, as finding different compositions uh, for this particular area, uh, this is another one I really want to come back and revisit. On to November, we're almost finished. Um, I don't really like this image that, that much. Obviously, I didn't have a very good day, so it's, it's quite grey and, and flat. Um, I think I know what I was trying to do with the composition at the time, but I don't think I quite executed it quite uh, too well. Got this foreground rock here. I think it's a little bit too tight across the side of the frame. And uh, I think the position of the tall and the tree, though over slightly to the left, I don't think balances particularly well with the rock. So. I think, you know, in principle, the composition works, but I think I need to readjust my position uh, to make these uh, objects work correctly. Right, last one, and we've got December here. Now, this is a great way to finish off the project because uh, overall, I got some pretty stinky weather for most of it. So it was nice to get some nice morning light here. Again, the shot taken over there, very similar to the one I think I took in May. What I really like, it's probably one of my favorite uh, places to shoot for this particular area, is over here where you got all these nice foreground rocks and the undulations in the ground. And when you get nice light, that creates a lot of texture and a lot of patterns in the rocks and a lot of shapes, which lead you nicely out to the tall and the tree. The sun had come up, it took a while for the light to actually hit the scene. So the light's a little bit harsh in this one, not as soft as a, I might want it. Um, but overall, I think this is one of my favorite spots to shoot at uh, Emsworthy Tour. Now, if I absolutely had to pick a favorite, it's got to be me, I think. What I really like about this image is the composition. I quite like the vertical orientation and I like the shapes that these rocks create and they lead you out up to the tor and to the tree. There's some really nice soft light in here and this is catching all the undulations on the ground. Uh, for me, it makes the most uh, pleasing image of the entire collection.
So now that you've seen all 12 images, please do let me know in the comments which is your favourite. But looking back in the project, it was hard. I mean, landscape photography is hard, landscape photography in Dartmoor can be even harder. But the whole experience, not that I was expecting it to be easy, but it was definitely more difficult than I thought. And this is for a couple of reasons. Even though the location is quite close to home, I couldn't quite get up here as much as I could. And then when I did come up here, I just had to deal with what weather I had. And this kind of, you know, when you're dealing with harsh conditions you get in Dartmoor, it can stifle your creativity a little bit. I did also think, not that, again, not didn't think it was going to be easy, but I thought I had quite a lot of different options for compositions, but actually picking out different and new ones was actually uh, slightly more difficult. But the point was, I did try some new things, and as I said when I was reviewing the images, while I didn't like all the compositions, it did give me ideas for future ones. And even with some of the compositions that I did like, I can come back and get them in, in better light. So as an overall kind of learning experience for this area, you know, I think, I, I think it was a bit of a success there, and it's definitely given me some more creative ideas for the future. And I like the fact that I tried slightly different things as well with the panoramic image and the moonlit stuff as well. So it's opened my eyes up, ideas, uh, eyes up to other ideas that I could use in the future. Uh, and what I did like uh, at the end was actually just bringing my images up here and, and rounding it off uh, in this rather beautiful dark warm morning. Why I didn't get more like this, um, I don't know, but, but never mind. But so overall, while it was a really tough project, um, I think it was definitely one worthwhile doing and I'm glad I did it. Right, time to wrap things up. If you are still watching this video, thank you so much for your patience. You've watched an awful lot of content for me. Obviously, this is something I filmed over a year, but if you have watched this video in its entirety, thank you ever so much. So, if you have, please do leave me a comment. I'd be really interested to hear not only what your favorite image is, but what you actually thought about the whole experience as well. So please do take the time to leave me a comment. Hit that like button, share the video, subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. And if you've still got some time after watching this video, please do check out one of my others. But until the next one, I'll see you then.